Please. Ah, yes. Please. So, so on Armistice Day, um, there was a lot of talk uh, because to Tommy Robinson went online and spoke <coughs> about um, spoken about potentially that um, uh, the pro-Palestinian uh, protests that were going to potentially march through the cenotaph and interrupt the uh, the minute silence. Mm -hmm. um, so. There was a lot of chatter online about about him sort of organising a sort of a rally, a march. A lot of people said, "Don't go," including myself. That was my view too. Yeah, yeah. I said, "Don't go," because you know, regardless of, of what happens, narrative control. I, I, exactly, yeah. and you know, you know, the media with you know Tommy mm. Robinson being there, it mm -hmm. will um, stifle things, mm. and they will paint people mm. as, as, you know, whatever, even though, you know, I'm sure he doesn't mm. care about all these labels. But it would also, it would, it would also distract from the main, we'll get to the, but from the main point. So that instead of the headlines having to be like parade of ethno religious supremacism overshadows what should have been a day of solemnity on the armistice. Instead of being that it becomes like far right thugs. Yeah. Disturb, yeah. Um, however yeah. wrong and, and yeah. sort of, and, and uh, clumsy that kind of those kind of sorts of characterizations are, it just means that the main point of the story that should be being elevated yes. gets completely missed. Yes, and I, I said, I said, don't go. Um, he has obviously he has a right to be there. Course, I, yeah. I believed as well um, that, that you know, regardless of protest, even though I think it's crass and I disagree with it, you do have the right to protest um, even on that day. I, you know, as much it's quite controversial, but mm. um, I do believe in, in in the right to assemble still, even if I disagree with it. So. The, the media, you could see the media machine working for that week because um, there was mm. debates all across that week about whether it should go ahead, whether it, sh it should, it shouldn't. And then, of course, the talk of Tommy Robinson potentially turn, turning up. So I, um, I got in contact with Tommy and I said, I'd, I'd like to join you and, uh, you know, just document what is happening um, from your side to start with. And then after that, I'll go to the, the pro-Palestinian side and just to document what was happening there. Um, so I met with Tommy beforehand um, and we walked down and I filmed everything. I got a, a brief in interview with him to get his viewpoint of the day. And then when I arrived, um, there was a scuffle that happened just before the cenotaph mm. where police purposely, and I witnessed it with my own eyes and it's all on camera, um, police purposely tried to block uh, attendees from going to the cenotaph which caused people confusion, stress, and all of a sudden, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, you know, a load of people they, started they stormed, they stormed the barriers, basically. They, they, they stormed it completely. And um, the police, it, it looked, you could, when I put out the, I thought I'd done justice that day because <laughs> I, put, I put out the video and then I had, Alistair Campbell retweet it, <laughs> uh, and, and then of course uh, Tommy retweeting it, and then all these people from so all clearly, these sides. Clearly so clearly, yeah. that was you know I I felt like I'd done okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so which was very weird, yeah, <laughs> but <strange>. um, but <laughs> I managed to I, I managed to get it all on camera, and it showed that the police were actually instigating it, but the media had already gotten to work. To be clear, how were the police instigating it? So forming this line as people were just can't, like peacefully walking towards yeah. the cenotaph to pay their respects. Police came yeah. out of nowhere, uh, started, you know, the, the, the line, the, mm. the, I'm not quite sure what it's, what it's called exactly, but they run in like a line and then they just fall. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they just, you know, batons drawn yeah, and yeah. just stopped people. And I remember it does, it does um, uh, connect well with what the only thing that I could really hear that was audible from, I went, maybe it was your video, maybe it was another one. I heard someone go, oh yeah, when it's us, you prevent us, yes. that sort of thing. Yeah, like when it's, yeah. of course, when it's us, there's all of a sudden, yeah. well, no public order, da, 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 yeah. all that sort of thing. And so like a lot of that, like what, even though I think it was wise and, uh, sorry, unwise and, and, um, and, and wrong to like, once that it had been formed to mm. storm it, that, that there's a sense in which obviously you, like, that these people's instincts are fundamentally sound and correct. Like they, they, yeah. they, they understand what Swella Bravman was pointing to in her article, that there, 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 there are these double standards with, with, with respect to policing. And only yeah. a week after that, there were sort of like sort of pro uh, anti-Israel protesters mm. who were sort of climbing over 
uh, like British public monuments yes. and like smothering them in the Palestinian flag and like the police just sort of stand just there. Just standing there well, not the doing The only people anything. that are policed are the ones that will consent to being policed at this point. Indeed, mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Because that is really, that's a really good point. And I think it's because of this, like the police no longer thinks of itself. This is, this is so clear, the Metropolitan Police at least, or, or the police in diverse parts of the country, like if I can put it that way, no longer think of themselves as sort of enforcers of the law without fear or favour. They think of themselves as a kind of like, like diplomatic referees between different communities. That's yeah. the right way of putting it. <laughs> and, 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 yeah. The arbiters of ethnic tension. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like, we will put out community reassurance patrols because mm. as we know, that, as Sadiq Khan literally said, diversity is our strength. But yeah. as we know, when there's conflict in the Middle East, that can flare up in London somehow. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. all, all, all this sort of thing. And so they do, once you think of it in that way, all of a sudden the community which is mo as it goes but what you're saying which is most willing to say we're not going to be pleased mm. and which is going to cry racism or cry bigotry all that sort of thing the police being thinking of themselves as diplomatic referees rather than actual right, enforcing right, the law without yeah. favor not to, they have they have to pander to those those demands not to shoehorn in my favorite country but in singapore the police are actually officially recognized as arbiters of ethnic tensions but it's yeah. just not it's just, it's biased just, at all it really right. yeah so like if you Multiculturalism is built into the Singaporean constitution, yes. and if you disturb the peace between the different mm. races that live within Singapore, which demographics are tightly mm. controlled, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter if you're a Muslim, <laughs> oh, Malay, or Indian, or Chinese, or expat, wow. or whatever, they will crush you. <laughs> <I didn't laughs> know that. Yeah. But regardless of how the Metropolitan Police think of themselves, they, they weren't remotely interested in your freedom of information no. request. Where, no. like, why, did you, why did you file one? What did they say? And like, what does this tell us that, about because the blob generally I yeah yeah i i because i saw the media machine get to work i saw that and i thought oh, hang on a minute i was there i saw what happened i've got it on on video here it is posting it for people to make their own mind up and uh unilaterally everyone agreed that the police instigated this so i thought okay i'm i'm gonna have to file a, an foi because they're not being honest they're they're just they're completely shunning mm -hmm. shunning this away mainly because it is Tommy Robinson mm -hmm. um, and there quite clearly is some kind of two-tier system against him, obviously. obviously, obviously yeah. um, and this has been happening for quite a long time with, with, with Tommy. So I decided I'm going to put out an FOI. I asked for communications, memos, emails, any communications between um, the within, Metropolitan yeah, Police. Within the Metropolitan Police, yeah, yeah. Within the Met to figure out uh, what was said even before the protests uh -huh. and the communications uh, of particular officers that were involved in this incident okay. to try and see why they decided to use this particular tactic of stopping people from mm -hmm. going, who ordered it, why, mm -hmm. and just to compare notes as well between uh, Tommy Robinson's um, uh, uh, attendees that were going to the Cenotaph to the uh, Palestinian um, protesters that were that were there on the same day and just to see just to view how they were viewing both sort of sets of or groups of people. Mm -hmm. um, they, they took over 20 days um, and that is actually, uh, you're not allowed to do that. It, it has to be within 20 days and I requested that. Mm. They then said, oh, under section they have, 30, they, they, they have to reply within 20 days. Yeah, sorry, yeah, they yeah. have to reply within 20 days. Uh, yeah. And um, they said, oh, under section whatever, we were, we were able to push this back. So they did. And now I have to wait until January 24, to which um, obviously the narrative's completely gone. No, nobody's yeah. talking about this anymore. Yeah. That's that's it. It's done. Hush, hush. Yeah, yeah. It, and it, it very much is like that. If there's something that's quite clearly, well, I say eight out, eight times out of ten, if it's something that quite clearly you can you can stir a narrative or stir the pot with. Mm -hmm when you try and find more information on it it tends to just be knocked back as soon as we've all turned our attention away to something, to something else, else. Mm. and i've noticed this time and time again so we're just seeing it again what do you make of the uh this sort of cordon sanitaire of around tommy robinson who i mean again too as i've now said a few times on this episode like when i come in looking from the outside you know i don't really see tommy saying things that don't sound just like Douglas Murray on like trigonometry mm -hmm. a few months ago. Like, mm -hmm. it, I mean, he's saying it with a very different kind of mannerism mm -hmm. and different accent. Mm -hmm. But, I, and I don't know the full history of the EDL or of Tommy mm -hmm. of all these things. But like, if I just look at how he kind of exists uh, today, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really seem like he's, you know, so far outside the Overton window that he's like, you know, persona non grata. But everybody talks about him and he's like, hush tones. Yeah, like, it's, like, it's, it's very, very hush hush. Um, 
Yeah. You've met him. You've met, met him. One like I, us. What do you make of him? Like, I, I like him personally. I don't have I don't have a problem with with Tommy whatsoever. Um, uh, you know, he he is his own worst enemy at times, mm. um, and I think he even agrees with that. Yeah. Um, the thing is, there are things that I disagree with with Tommy, like everyone. You know, and it's important to note when I when I do journalism or when I'm when I'm doing citizen journalism or, or whatever, and I'm I'm talking to people, it's important to go out on the day and do your work and, and to be as impartial as possible. Mm -hmm. um, I knew that the press wouldn't be with Tommy on that day. <laughs> so I so I thought, okay, well, that that to me isn't fair because mm. you're not seeing both sides of the story in that, in, that, in that respect. So that's why I decided to go and I got in contact with him and, and I met with him and just to get that side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's also a question that which I like to ask, which is that where is the Hungarian Tommy Robinson? And like, the reason why I think that's a, a forceful question with a, with, a, with a great deal of thrust to it is because that when you have a, a, a fundamentally patriotic elite, which is not committed to using its own people as, a, as guinea pigs in some mm. reckless demographic experiment the, the, of the kind that we've gone through over the last 40 years, you're not going to get people from the, the lower ends of society, from the working class um, uh, end of society speaking out about it and there may be times and there have been times and he's definitely got better there's definitely been an evolution like he's got mm. much more like mm. um he's he's at, at first it was quite impulsive then he actually learned quite a bit about islam he read quite a lot about it he clearly mm -hmm. knows quite a bit about, about, about the subject he's pretty mm -hmm. rigorous in terms of his statistics and that sort of thing if he's his own worst enemy at times he does sometimes um it's not so much that he does bad things, but he does unwise things. Like he falls into elephant traps. Like he gets mm -hmm. a contempt of court order and he violates it mm. on camera. It's just like, mm. Mm. and obviously they're going to bang you up for that. So he, he has all of these sort of I would say like strategic flaws to, to him, but uh, he wouldn't exist if it weren't for the fact that we, we don't have people like Douglas Murray, the people who you would expect to, to be making these decisions in government. And when you do have patriotic mm. like uh, people in, in government who genuinely do, does care for its own people. People, people like Tommy Robinson are, just go to loosen games on the weekend and they don't, they don't become a political phenomenon. <laughs> and so that, that, where is the Hungarian Tommy Robinson? He doesn't exist. I think the establishment created him essentially exactly. in that way because exactly. they, weren't, they, weren't, um, they weren't addressing problems at the time. Indeed. Um, and that's, that's just the way it is. You know, you have a working class man from Luton mm -hmm. um, who, who wants to ask very potent questions that people are quite generally quite terrified to answer mm. and uh, or to ask sorry um and to answer and to answer yes yeah um so it was it was inevitable really that uh, that a tommy robinson would would occur mm. um so but it's yeah. always fascinating to me too and I, i've spoken about this about how it, this dynamic played out with trump where it's mm. like when trump lost the 2020 election everyone on the left was like Oh, we've like destroyed like the big baddie, and now all his like his his. There's little, always a boogeyman. His, yeah, his, yeah, but like all his like little servants out there in the boondocks will like turn off or whatever, like the end of like a Marvel movie, like they'll all like turn into dust. And it's like you know, if let's say you locked up Tommy Robinson for the rest of his life, everybody who likes the things that he says are still out there. Like, mm. yeah, like you, you, he's just a figurehead. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. You're turning him into yeah. a martyr. Yes. Yeah. Well, this is it, and I think it's it's very dangerous to to do. Uh, things like that when you know you just you just lock someone up just for you know what he's what he talks about uh, essentially you know whether you agree with it or disagree with it you know I, I thought I, I I was under the the impression that this country was was founded on the battle of ideas essentially and that everyone you would have hoped would would be able to to sit and just um you know, if a bad idea comes along, you would have a good idea to replace it, mm -hmm. and you'd be able to to do a two in a row. But unfortunately, we, we don't live in those times anymore, where you know it's guilt by association. Oh, you interview this person or you, you speak to that person, that means you endorse everything they yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're labelled the same person. Mm. Whereas, it's created that that cloud of, um, it's that it's created that cloud of worry. Mm. Um, you know, sitting here today, I'm sure you both don't endorse everything I say. Of course not. And you don't. It's an interview. Mm. But people forget that. Mm. Um, and people forget that guilt by association just only, it's, it narrows the conversation. Um, so It's the mark of a declining society. Well, listen, yeah. Lewis, thank you so much for joining us in Deprogram. Keep buggering on, boosting morale in the culture <laughs> war so that we can keep buggering on.
Very good of you to join us. Thank Evan, you. thanks as ever. Thank You've you. been watching Deprogrammed. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment if you wish, and we shall see you on the next one.